Trap cards are some of the slowest types of cards in the game. Most decks either play absolutely no trap cards, or as few as possible, while others play nothing but trap cards. There are some incredibly powerful trap cards, although because of the requirement to set a trap card for at least one turn before you can activate it, they don't go very well in combo decks. As mentioned in the previous video, if you set a quick play spell you cannot activate it until the start of the next turn. This is true for all trap cards. But like quick play spells, trap cards are speed spell too, which means that you can activate a trap card after it has been set for one turn, during any phase of play, and in response to other cards that are speed spell 1 and speed spell 2. Here are some very popular trap cards. The first one is Mirror Force. It has the activation condition when an opponent's monster declares an attack. Destroy all of your opponent's attack position monsters. You can only activate Mirror Force when your opponent declares an attack, but you can do it at any point during the window in which the attack occurred. If you have multiple trap cards you'd like to activate when your opponent declares an attack, you can eventually chain a Mirror Force in the middle of the chain. We'll talk more about chains in a future video. Bottomless Trap Hole is a trap with a similar type of activation condition. When your opponent summons a monster, or monsters, with 1500 or more attack, which is its activation condition, you can destroy that monster, or monsters, with 1500 or more attack, and if you do, banish it. So the activation condition of Bottomless Trap Hole is when a summon has been successful, but prior to the open game state that follows. We'll talk more about open game states in the future, but similar to Mirror Force, if a monster is summoned and it fits the criteria for Bottomless Trap Hole, a sequence of quick play spells or trap cards or cards that are speed spell 2 can be activated and the bottomless trap hole will be legal to activate at some point during this chain. Now the problem with trap cards is that you have to set them, which means that they're always in danger of being destroyed before you can use them by something like Mystical Space Typhoon. We call trap cards with this type of activation condition reactive trap cards, which is why many players opt to play these types of trap cards instead. We call these chainable trap cards. Compulsory Evacuation Device is a normal trap card, which has the effect to target one monster on the field, which is its activation condition, and to return that target to the hand. Because Compulsory Evacuation activation condition is not as restrictive as when a monster declares an attack or when a monster is summoned, this card is easier to activate at any point in a turn. But because it is returning a monster to the hand, there must at least be a monster on the field to activate Compulsory Evacuation Device. So if your opponent would try to destroy it with a Mystical Space Typhoon, you may be able to make some use of it, whereas your Mirror Force and your Torrential Tribute may be destroyed before you can activate them. Dimensional Barrier is a normal trap card with the following effect. Declare one card type. The types you can name are Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Pendulum, which is its activation condition. For the rest of the turn, neither player can special summon monsters of the declared type. Also, negate the effects of all monsters of that type while they are on the field. You can only activate one Dimensional Barrier per turn. This card is an excellent card to play as Chainable Disruption against your opponent, because if your opponent were to target this with Mystical Space Typhoon, and their entire deck relied on performing Ritual Summons, you could make them unable to do so for the entire turn. Trap cards tend to have more powerful effects than spell cards, which is the nature of them being a bit slower by being required to be set before you can activate them. The next type of card we'll talk about is the Continuous Trap card. Similar to the Continuous Spell card, it has a Infinity symbol on it to indicate that it is a Continuous Trap card. The first one we'll look at is called Anti-Spell Fragrance. Anti-Spell Fragrance is known as a Floodgate. It is a card that prevents an action from being taken by both players. Some Floodgates are one-sided, some are two-sided. Anti-Spell Fragrance is two-sided. Although if you're playing Anti-Spell Fragrance in your deck, usually you are doing so in a deck where you either don't need to activate spell cards, or once you've completed your first turn, you will no longer need to activate a spell card. The effect of Anti-Spell Fragrance says both players must set spell cards before activating them. If either player sets a spell card, that spell card cannot be activated until their next turn. Effectively, this turns spell cards into trap cards, requiring them to be set face down for an entire turn. Matter of fact, it's an entire two turns. Even quick play spells can't be activated during the next turn. This effect is continuous and applies as long as this card is face up. When you flip a continuous trap card, it does start a chain, and until the chain resolves, its effect is not taking place. So if you have a Mystical Space Typhoon, you can chain it to the activation of Anti-Spell Fragrance to destroy Anti-Spell Fragrance to allow you to continue activating spell cards. The next continuous trap I'll discuss is called Summon Limit which is also a very popular floodgate. It says neither player can summon more than two times per turn. Negated summons count towards this limit. Negated cards or effects that would summon do not count. Many duelists who play summon limit play it because it counts summons retroactively. If your opponent has already summoned twice this turn, you can then flip summon limit, keeping it a secret longer, preventing your opponent from playing around summon limit. As to make any Link, Synchro, or Xyz monster, generally would require you to summon at least three times, because each of those monsters usually requires at least two monsters to make. Our next continuous trap I'd like to look at is called Lose One Turn. This card is also a floodgate. This one actually has an activation condition. It says, activate only while you control no special summoned monsters, which is its condition. While a monster is face up on the field, negate its effect during the turn that it was special summoned. This effect is continuous and applies as long as this card is face up on the field. It has a second effect. It says, if an effect monster or monsters is special summoned in attack position, which is its activation condition, change it to defense position. This is a trigger-like effect. Lose One Turn has this speed spell one effect attached to it. Whenever a monster is summoned, it will activate. It will trigger when a monster is special summoned. This is one of the rare scenarios where a trap card has an effect that is not speed spell 2. Trigger effects are always speed spell 1. Our next continuous trap card is called Fairy Box. When you activate Fairy Box, it does not do anything. 
it becomes a face-up card, similar to how many continuous spell cards we talked about in the previous video also didn't do anything when they were activated. It has an activation condition for its second effect. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, which is its activation condition, which is the same as Mirror Force, you can toss a coin and call it. If you call it right, the attacking monster's attack becomes zero until the end of the battle phase. Now because the activation condition is the same as Mirror Force, and Fairy Box is a trap card, its effect is technically a quick effect, even though it seems like it is a trigger effect. It does not trigger when an attack is declared, you can activate it when an attack is declared. So Fairy Box does not need the to be the first card that is activated when trying to resolve the effect of Fairy Box. You can activate your own Mystical Space Typhoon, and then chain the effect of Fairy Box, as long as both are being done in response to an attack of a monster. Fairy Box is also going to be one of our first cards we look at that has a maintenance cost. The last sentence on the card says, during each of your standby phase, pay 500 life points or destroy this card. If you choose not to pay a maintenance cost that is optional, the card will be destroyed, at least according to the description on this particular card. Because Lose One Turn has an effect that triggers, when it triggers, if you would destroy it with a card such as Mystical Space Typhoon, or Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, it will resolve without effect, because it is a continuous card, and continuous cards need to remain face up on the field, just like we discussed when we were talking about continuous spells in the previous video. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit has a similar effect to Mystical Space Typhoon. It has a slightly different activation condition, and we'll talk about its condition is that a card that is already face up on the field triggers an effect to start a chain and is still on the field. You can discard Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit to destroy the card. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is often played because it can be activated from your hand, whereas if you were using a Mystical Space Typhoon on your opponent, depending on whose turn it is and whether or not the Mystical Space Typhoon is set, you may or may not be able to activate it. We'll be talking about a few more continuous trap cards and then we'll move on to the last type of trap card. Call of the Haunted is a continuous trap card that says you can activate this card by targeting one card in your graveyard, which is the activation condition. Its effect is the special summon that target in face up attack position. It then has a continuous effect, which says when this card leaves the field, destroy that monster, and then it has another continuous effect, which says when that monster is destroyed, destroy this card. Call the Haunted is similar to an equipment spell, but it is not an equipment spell. There are no such thing as equipment trap cards, although continuous trap cards will on occasion feel similar to an equipment spell card. And this is the, the scenario I was referring to when talking about Spiral Gear Big Red in the previous video. Our last continuous trap card is called Dark Factory of More Production. This card has no activation condition to flip it face up. This card has a cost. Its cost is you can send a monster from your hand or your field to the graveyard. Its effect is you can draw one card. And then it has a hard once per turn that you can only use the effect of Dark Factory of More Production once per turn. When a continuous trap card has an effect that activates, you can choose to activate it when the card is initially placed face up on the field at the time that it is placed face up. So we can flip Dark Factory of More Production and either choose to activate the effect or choose not to activate the effect at that time. If we choose not to activate the effect at that time, we cannot use the effect of Dark Factory of More Production until the card resolves and is successfully face up on the field. We could also choose to activate it at the time we flip it face up, in which case we'll pay the cost and then we'll resolve the effect, and if it resolves successfully, we'll draw a card. If Dark Factory of More Production is destroyed by Mystical Space Typhoon in response to the effect, we will discard a card as cost, because costs are paid when cards are activated. Mystical Space Typhoon will then resolve first, destroying Dark Factory of More Production. Because Dark Factory of More Production is a continuous card, if it leaves the field, it will resolve without effect, and we will not draw one card. There are different reasons as to why you will or will not want to activate the effect of your trap card when you flip it face up. Some of those differences involve Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, which I mentioned earlier. But mostly it is just strategy based on what cards are being played in the game at that time. The last type of trap card we're going to be talking about is called the Counter Trap. Counter Traps have their own symbol. It is a little arrow pointing to the left. Counter Traps are speed spell 3 and can be used to negate something. Generally they negate something. Solemn Judgment is the most popular Counter Trap in the game. It says when a monster or monsters would be summoned, or a spell or trap card is activated, you can pay half of your life points, which is the cost, negate the summon or the activation, and if you do, destroy the card. When this card refers to a summon, it means a summon that does not start a chain, such as a game mechanic summon, such as a link summon, a pendulum summon, a synchro summon, an exe summon, or a non-activated effect of a monster that would summon itself, such as a cyber dragon or infernoid sites moss, as we mentioned in the previous video. Solemn Strike was also referenced quite a few times earlier on in the series. When a monster would be special summoned or a monster effect is activated, you can pay 1500 life points, which is the cost. You can negate the summon or the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Neither of these cards can negate the summon of a card by a card effect, but Solemn Judgment can negate a spell or trap card that has the effect that would summon a monster, and Solemn Strike has the effect that can negate a monster effect that would summon a monster. But neither of them can technically negate the summon of a monster by a card effect. They can only negate the card that is doing the summon if the card meets the criteria on the card. Our next counter trap is called Negate Attack. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, Target the attacking monster, negate the attack, and then end the battle phase. So unlike the previous two counter traps that negate spells, traps, monsters, and summons, negate attack can negate battle. The next counter trap is O Fish. When an effect monster's effect activates, shuffle one of your banished fish, sea serpents, or aqua monsters into your main deck. Negate the activation and destroy it. This card on surface might look worse than a card such as Solemn Strike, which also negates monster effects. And it is. There are different reasons to play different counter traps in the game. Sometimes it's because they go well with your deck. Sometimes it's because they do more things. The reasons for your choices in different cards will be up to you. For instance, Orcus Crescendo is a counter trap. It says, when a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated while you control an Orcus Link monster, which is the activation condition, you can negate the activation and if you do, banish that card. 
the other part of the effect we'll be talking about later. But the reason this card sees play over other cards such as Solemn Judgment and Solemn Strike is this card can be searched out by the Orcist archetype. When cards are searchable, they are more likely to be played. As I mentioned, not many decks play trap cards, but if your deck can search a trap card at the end of your combo, it is a little bit more worth playing. The next counter trap card is called Red Reboot. Red Reboot says, when your opponent activates a trap card, negate the activation, and if you do, set that card face down. Then, they can set one other trap card directly from their deck. But, for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, your opponent cannot activate trap cards. This card might seem worse than Solemn Judgment because it only negates a trap card, it even lets them keep the trap card, and it lets them get a new trap card. But it does prevent trap cards for the rest of the turn, so it has a benefit over Solemn Judgment in that sense. This card also has a benefit that this card can be activated from your hand by paying half of your life points. So if you draw Red Reboot for the start of your turn, it is live immediately. You can always pay half of your life points. And it's nice when you have a trap card that does not require you to set it for an entire turn to activate it, which is the biggest weakness of trap cards. Also, Red Reboot is spell speed 3. Counter trap cards are spell speed 3. Cards that are spell speed 3 can only be chained to other cards that are spell, that are spell speed 3, meaning that counter traps can only be used to counter counter traps. So if your opponent's playing a deck with many trap cards and they activate Solemn Judgment in response to one of your cards, often the only card you can play that will prevent them from stopping you is Red Reboot, because it is a counter trap. We'll learn more about Speed Spell in the future. But the basics are that Speed Spell 1 cards cannot be chained to anything unless they're a sequence of trigger effects. Speed Spell 2 cards can be chained to Speed Spell 1 and Speed Spell 2 cards. Speed Spell 3 cards can be chained to any card, including other Speed Spell 3 cards. While talking about cards that can be activated from the hand, I'll just mention that Infinite Impermanence is one of the most popular trap cards in the game, and this card can be activated from your hand, if you control no other cards. Typhoon sees niche play, and is another trap card that can be activated from your hand. Its requirement is that your opponent controls two or more spell and trap cards, and you control none. So generally, cards that, so generally trap cards that can be activated from your hand have some conditions on them, making them a little bit more difficult to use when you can do that, but the fact that they are trap cards is usually the reason they are played, to play around cards that might play, that might not deal so well if they were spell cards. And the last thing I wanted to mention are graveyard effects of trap cards. The two trap cards here, Orcus Crescendo, which we've already discussed, and Breakthrough Skill, both have effects that can be used in the graveyard. Assuming both of these cards are in the graveyard, let's read their effects. The second effect of Orcus Crescendo says, You can banish this card from your graveyard, which is a cost. You can add to your hand one of your Dark Machine monsters that is banished or in your deck. This then applies the following restriction, which is you cannot special summon monsters. The turn you activate this effect except Dark Machine monsters. And you can only use one Orcus Crescendo effect per turn and only once that turn. So if your opponent would destroy your Orcus Crescendo with a card like Mystical Space Typhoon, and it goes to the graveyard, it has an effect you can use to banish this card and search for an, a Dark Machine monster, which most of the Orcus cards happen to be. Now the reason I wanted to address this is that this effect in the graveyard is actually Speed Spell 2. Trap cards in the graveyard are Speed Spell 2. Even though Orcus Crescendo is a counter trap, and, most counter, and all counter trap effects on field are Speed Spell 3, this is Speed Spell 2, which means you can activate the effect in response to other cards, you can use it during any phase of play, but your opponent can also respond to this card using Speed Spell 2 cards. And the last trap I would like to discuss is called Breakthrough Skill. This card has an effect on field which says, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, which is the activation condition. That face-up monster your opponent controls has its effects negated until the end of this turn. It has a second effect that can be used from the graveyard. It says during your turn, except the turn that this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls, which is its cost. It says that card has its effects negated until the end of this turn. So Breakthrough Skill has two card effects that both effectively do the same thing. One of them can only be used on your turn, and one of them can be used on both players' turns, giving Breakthrough Skill additional utility after using it the first time. But because it is a trap card, it can be used in response to your opponent's cards, because trap cards are speed spell too. So the graveyard effect of Breakthrough Skill can be used on your turn to help you push through boards. If you try to destroy one of your opponent's monsters and they activate its effect, you can chain the effect of Breakthrough Skill in the graveyard to negate that monster's effect. So unlike Elixir of White Destiny, which was addressed in the previous video, which can only be used in the main phase because it was a spell, even though it was a quick play spell, Breakthrough Skill is also a speed spell too because it is a trap card, even in the graveyard. Now normally a speed spell 2 card can be activated during any phase of play, and on either player's turn, although Breakthrough Skill specifically has its own restriction preventing it from being used on your opponent's turn. In the next video, we'll be learning how to play an actual game, what are the phases of play, and what actions can be made during each of those phases of play. Other videos will probably be devoted with more detail on certain phases.